No Film School's coverage of NAB 2018 is brought to you by Black Magic Design, creating revolutionary solutions for film, post-production, and television. Adorama, the world's only full-service destination for photo, video, and electronics. And My Road Reel, the world's largest, is back. Register now at myroadreel.com. Hey, so this is Charles Hayne for No Film School. I'm here at NAB Show 2018, and I'm sitting here with Grant Petty, the CEO and founder of Black Magic Design. Good morning. Hi, how are you? The first thing you wanted to talk about this morning was obviously news that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this weekend, which is the new Pocket Cinema camera came out. So uh, do you want to start telling me? I mean, this is it, right? So basically, um, I mean, it's not quite shipping yet. Uh, we're still a few months away, but... I mean, the biggest thing we've been asked about is everyone asks about the pocket camera. When are you going to do a, you know, an Ultra HD pocket camera? Yeah, I mean, it's, it incorporates all the, uh, essentially all the stuff that we learned with the first camera. Um, we've incorporated in this one, um, so it's good. So lens mount native EF? It, no, it's a micro four thirds, which is the same as the original pocket camera. So you can use all your lenses, which I thought was an important thing to do. But it is a larger sensor. It's a full uh, four third size sensor. So you've got no crop factor on the four thirds lenses. Dual native ISO is obviously a thing that's really hot this year. So yeah. it's great that you've got it. And it's yeah. great that it's going up to 25,000. Yep. Internal recording, it's still ProRes, still DNX. Uh, yes, it's uh, ProRes and RAW. And there's actually two media cards that's on the side. So we actually do SD card and uh, CFast uh, because it's a, you know, it's a 4K uh, camera as well as Ultra HD and HD. Uh, but you've got the two different uh, cards, so you can choose. They will switch between the cards if they're both fast enough to do the recording. It's Because it's 60 frames a second, um, but it's also 120 frames windowed HD as well. Um, so depending on what you want to do. The biggest thing that really drove a lot of the design was uh, the big screen. We needed a large 5-inch screen because when you're focusing uh, 4K, you need to get the size. But also the ergonomics are a lot better. We've got uh, an adjustment on the front here so you can do the iris. But you can also bring up uh, white bounce and other settings on the front here on the multifunction controls. So you've got a lot of control, uh, but you've still got, it's running the Blackmagic operating system, which is what's in Ursa Mini. So this is kind of an Ursa Mini Pro shrunk down into a small form factor. So you've got customizable buttons, you've got the multifunction controls over here. There's a record button on the front and stills button, and there's a record button on the front. Because our feeling with this camera is that if Ursa is a camera you shoot people with, this is a camera you shoot yourself with. Oh. So if you think about it, you need to be able to kind of put it up and shoot yourself and start recording. So it's got a tally light on the front, um, but its its form factor was somewhat driven by the big screen and the fact you kind of want to be able to shoot yourself. You want to be a, a single person shoot, where like if we're doing an interview, you could actually be also the cameraman because you've set it up on a tripod. So you need to be able to have that kind of ergonomic. It sort of drove some of the design. It's extremely lightweight and that's what we were really going for. We wanted to retain the lightweight. So the camera's grown in size, but at the same time we've got, you know, it, it is a professional camera. And I think there's two areas where we've done some of that um, sort of professional angle. There's the ergonomics as a big area, but also the um, audio capabilities have been souped up dramatically. Uh, if you look at the uh, front of the camera, for example, um, we've got uh, four microphones, so there's two on either side. So we've got quite a lot of uh, capability in the audio side. But also on the side here, we've got uh, the rubber boots actually come out now and rotate around. That was something we've also- Oh, that's huge. From the, original, from the original cinema camera, as well as from the pocket camera, we've learned from both. Uh, so we've got a proper XLR, uh, like a mini XLR connector here with mm -hmm. phantom power. So you can plug in the microphone and do interviews straight into the side of it because it'll phantom power the microphone. Uh, we've also got a full-size HDMI connector. The other pocket camera had a smaller size one. It's a full-size one now, so it's strong. Um, and also, you know, the usual microphone connections and the headphone connections on the side. What's that? There's a light on the front too, so if you are self-shooting, you tell it's recording. What's the power I'm seeing down there at the bottom? Is that oh, in yeah, or out? It's a standard, uh, it's a camera-style power connector, so it's a two-pin 12 volt, I think it's got a voltage range, and I'm not exactly sure of the voltage range, but it's a 12 volt uh, DC input. Uh, so it's a pretty normal thing. What is interesting though, if you look at the side, there's a USB-C connection there. Mm -hmm. So this will mount discs. You can plug a disc into the side and record straight on your media disc. But if you plug in a flash drive, then it'll record straight to the flash drive. And so you don't need an external recorder if you want to go to like an SSD or, or a flash. But if you were doing like one of the proxy modes or something and you're just really shooting a lot of stuff, but I mean, you know, who really wants to record to that? It's really, you probably want to use a flash drive or something faster, you know, one of the fast mm -hmm. USB-C drives, but it'll record straight to it, then you just unplug it and put it on your editing system and edit straight off the media. So you don't need to do the whole card shuffle thing if you don't want. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's a, a pretty exciting capability. Plus, of course, it's got the menus. It's got all the same Ursa menus that Ursa has, and also Ursa Broadcast. Um, because it's running the Blackmagic operating system, you've got uh, setups, you've got 3D LUTs. There's actually 3D LUTs built into this. Oh, wait a minute, it's a 3D, yeah, it's got what's 3D the LUTs. price point? 
Uh, it's one thousand two hundred ninety-five. So for a thirteen hundred dollar camera, you've got internal three D LUT support. Oh yeah, and you can record them into the media. You can bake them in if you want to. Uh, it's also got Bluetooth. So you can do all the Bluetooth control that the Ursa has. So you can do like, for example, if you were doing this interview, you could have three of these cameras. You could trigger the Bluetooth control, and you'd be able to record on all of them at once. Then you could use DaVinci Resolve 15's multicam to edit the whole thing back together. I mean, it's probably not going to be shipping until September, but we can come along to the show and, and show everyone what we've been doing, and it's all that feedback, all that discussion, all that debate has all kind of come into, into the product.